What up? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And look at you. You done stumbled upon little OTB Saints, where we bring you all the latest black and gold coverage. Who are the Saints going to draft? Who's going to be their quarterback? What does the salary cap look like? All that information and more. Hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe. Nick. Uh, well, Taylor. What's up, brother? What's going on, dude? Hey, not much, man. Sorry. Uh, the uh, the computers beat my ass today, so I can't I can't figure it out. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, I mean it's Taylor's fault. I wouldn't yeah, worry. Yeah, don't about blame it, yourself. Dude. Blame Taylor. Um, uh, now speaking of maybe not the best news though, uh, we've talked about it plenty here. Uh, but I'll just ask you for an update. Uh, what is the latest inside info on the Ryan Ramchick injury front? Yeah, I I don't know if there's anything new. I I just think that it's it's probably I think it's probably likely you know as i look at it i wrote something last week just kind of analyzing it and you kind of look at it and you look at how they did the contract and they cut out all the money except for the guarantees you you couldn't get away from the guarantees so that takes it down to 6.5 million and there's no guarantees in future seasons and then you start looking at it and you say like hmm, like if he were to spend the season just say trying to rehab it and then next year he retires as a june post june first retirement like that would be extremely beneficial they'd be able to spread it out then it'd kind of be hitting the cap two years from now. And given how they're set up right now and they're structured, that would make a lot of sense. If you were to retire right now, you don't really get, you know, it, 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 it's a huge hit. And then if you wait until after June 1st, it's like a million dollar difference. And it just kind of feels like maybe there's an understanding that this probably isn't going to settle in a way that, that you know, I, I just don't see him playing again. I, I just like, if I had to bet today, you're asking me to, to you know, mm. go to draft the place to bet on it. Like I'm betting on him not playing. And it just it just kind of feels like maybe they're gonna give it the year because it's beneficial for the team, it's beneficial for him. It doesn't really make a difference, you know, if he's never gonna play again. You know, he gets a year to kinda, of, you know, just make some money and maybe if things work out, they work out. But it really feels like they're preparing for him not to come back. And if you know, I think that's kind of how you gotta approach it. And then like let's say he, he does end up coming back, but they end up finding two tackle options or they find a tackle option and Trevor Penning becomes functional or even good. Okay. Like you're early on. So I, I I just think that you have to kind of figure, figure out a way forward without him, but for them to come out in, you know, March and you know, I'm looking at this now, like it's like been a few weeks and you're kind of like, you take a step back and you're like, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? If you're coming out in March and saying you're preparing for him to like not play, that's like really, really bad. Like it's, it's, it's not good. And you know, I, I just don't think that, I just don't think that we're going to see him play football for the Saints again. Like it just feels like it's not going to, it's not in the cards. Like that's just kind of, and I'm just guessing at it, but kind of looking at everything that's happened, looking at how they've done other contracts when players were at the end of their career and they were doing things to kind of manipulate the cap. Like some of the same fingerprints are on, you know, different cases and, you know, you kind of see a little bit of a pattern there and, you know, I'm, I might be looking at this way too much through, the, you know, my third eye or whatever, but like it just kind of feels like it, it, it's it's at the end of the line. So, Nick, this almost guarantees obviously a 14. You take a tackle, but I mean, if Ramchek can't go and you can't maybe trust Trevor Penning, I mean, we could be looking at obviously more than just one tackle. Like, how much does this change the plan for the Saints in the draft? Yeah, I I, I think if you can double dip or something, you you really got to look at. Um, you can't bet on penning like that's the biggest problem here is it's just too bad that there wasn't even glimmers of of like okay it's 30 percent there you know how do you get to the other like you know 30 percent that you need to, to be functional or whatever but that's not even there like is, isn't that worrying though nick it's like you can't bet on pinning but you have to bet on two rookie tackles <laughs> i mean like that yeah, doesn't feel I mean, any better <laughs> right because you, you've seen a miss i mean that's, that's kind of the problem yeah um, you know, I, I, I think you kind of see how it goes. And then after the draft, you, you look at it like I think DJ Humphreys is still out there. Pete's still out there. Uh, Beckton's still out there. So you can kind of plug and play it a little bit. So, like, if you don't get the options that, that you want, like, I think you have to hit that market and, and go about it that way. And I think you ideally not, you know, go after some of these guys or not or not get older. But it does come a point where you got to keep your quarterback safe. And I don't know that they can do that right now. Um, I don't think you want to put – James Hurst in one of those positions because I, I think he's just kind of limited if you're going to be such a heavy outside zone team at, at one of them tackle spots. So, yeah, I, look, I, I think that that it does change their their draft plan quite a bit because I mean I think now you have to be like wide open to two of them and 
you know, one of the things that I kind of hate about it is if if you're sitting at 14 and there's a, a realistic scenario where Brock Bowers falls to there, and maybe he's not more valuable or better than, than one of the tackles, but I don't think you can even really have the discussion at this point. I, I think you're so pigeonholed into having to take one, and at least this is a good draft to be in that position. And, like, typically there's two guys, maybe three, that, that you're willing to take in the top 15 and the third one's kind of a stretch. I think this year there's there's five, and I think all five of them are, are fine picks. So it's a good year to ha- kind of have to do that. But just philosophically, like, I, I hate it. And you kind of go back and you look through their drafts and you look at all the times they, they've missed in the first round. And a lot of the times it is because they've been backed into a corner and they've allowed a, a need to kind of get to the point where – they had to do that in mm. years where there was some flexibility to kind of do some different things. Like you draft for check and that ends up being a good pick, but years where you're back into a corner, like you trade up for Davenport because you have to have the pass rusher. You take Cesar Ruiz, who I think it's about fine, but you know, it's 24. Eh, I don't know. Um, you know, Pete was a year where they kind of had to Sheldon Rankins was kind of a year where you kind of had to, and like that, those picks are all like, okay, but, are there other options? And, and, you know, I think those years they weren't able to kind of look at them. And there's just kind of a pattern there when you look at like some of the draft misses or just like the, the, you know, the ones where you're like, eh, like it's, you kind of foresaw what they were going to do and they had to do it. But look, again, I, I don't, I think this is a great year to be in this position. Like if you have to have a draft where you have to get an offensive tackle, they're in great shape. And this probably will have an option between a couple guys. So at least that works out. But yeah, I think at 45, it, it kind of, it kind of puts you in the same thing. Like if there's a, a tackle in range and it's palatable, I don't know that you can really have wandering eyes too much anywhere else. So, I mean, it, it, it's definitely impactful on the overall strategy. No, I mean, you feel like going to tackle hundred percent first. Um, let's play with an interesting hypothetical that y'all played with on new Orleans stuff football, which by the way, y'all, if you love the saints, you want to go sign up uh, and you can always follow Nick at Nick underscore Underhill on Twitter. Uh, but Let's say Michael Penix Jr. is on the board at 45. What you doing? And or let's say best available. If he is a, for what I mean, I, you know, that's kind of hard to ask like that because best available to who? Uh, but if Penix is there at 45, do you actually have to think about maybe taking a flyer there? I think I would. I mean, I think you you I think you got to. I don't think he's going to be there at forty five. But if he if he's at forty five and and you like him, yeah, I think you absolutely got to take him. And you know, it, it does. It is part of like who else is available. Like there's there's scenarios where you kind of get there and, and you know the receivers are kind of gone. Um, I don't. You know, one of the things about the the tackle of forty five, like kind of theoretically going through the exercises and stuff. Like I don't necessarily like a lot of the fits there at forty five for what I think the scheme's going to be. Like, Patrick Ball, like, I, I don't think he kind of has the lateral movement to fit. He's a guy that'll probably be there. So, I, I, I think you do kind of start looking at it, and then if you don't have the pass catcher there, like, that, that is a spot. If, if the quarterback falls, like, I, I think kind of have to do it. Um, it, it, w- it would be so fascinating to me to see if they actually would, because it feels like they're, they're bought in on, on car big time, but I don't think taking a quarterback should even really be viewed that way. Like, if you were going to take one, and, and put him behind Drew Brees, you know, Patrick Mahomes, it, it, what was it, pick 11, pick 11 that year? Like, yeah. I, don't yeah, think you can, I don't think you can have feelings about it if you're somebody else. Like, if they're willing to do this to Brees, and then the next year Brees is, like, chasing the MVP, like, in, in 18 until he got hurt in that Thursday night game. Um, like, he was definitely in that mix. So, I, I don't think you could take it any type of way. I think it's something that, that they should be trying to do. I think you got to kind of be looking more towards the long term. And I think they're – kind of really at a place where it's very close to kind of entering that 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 teetering point where you kind of got to consider like full rebuild if like something doesn't shake soon and you know that would be a great piece to get try to develop them um you know i think one of the funny things is like you look at the quarterbacks that have been drafted um since oh since 2006 and i think jay kaner has he might be the first guy, like if he makes it through the season, that that has made it two years in the in the system. I don't know that they've even drafted a quarterback that's made it two years. Grayson didn't. Um, Ian Book didn't. So like, yeah, he might be he might be the first one like to to stick on the the roster for two years. Um, so I, I don't know. It's kind of a, a fascinating like two consecutive years. So it, some guys came back on the practice squad, but yeah, I mean, 
they haven't done a good job of getting talent in at that position. I guess is the point I'm trying to make, and I, I think they gotta they gotta take advantage of some opportunities if they present themselves. So, Nick, we were talking about receiver yesterday, and and if you're at 45 and you mentioned like there's maybe uh, a receiver that you love or don't love, whatever the situation might be, maybe you don't select him there, but if they were, what kind of receiver, like what type, what body type of a receiver are they looking for to add to this roster? Like Ideally, I think like yeah. a six two six three guy, he, someone like that, it's just you can throw them open, they're good after the catch. They've been just like kind of miserable after the catch. Um, and part of that's that's the offense too. I, I did a, a study not long ago, just kind of looking at it, and they were near the top of the league in, in yak all the way up until 2016, and then they changed their offense. You know, and we all saw how it kind of came more condensed and everything. So you just aren't necessarily throwing the ball to guys in like advantageous positions to, to catch and run. So I think like spreading it out a little bit more in the new system is something that'll just help on its own, but. I think it's a mentality too, and I don't know that they have guys with with the mentality like Olave catches the ball and he's you know typically trying to to protect himself a little bit, which you know given his body type, I, I think is smart. Shahid is someone that that's good with the ball in his hands, but you know he's also you know he needs a little bit more space I think yeah. for that to become effective. Like a bigger, stronger guy that can like maybe catch the ball, break a tackle, and then you know get in the space. Like I, I think that's something that could be really helpful to this team. Um, but they absolutely need someone you know that that just down in the red zone that can. You, you can throw it, throw it up to. I hate to say it that way, but like you need it, and you know, just someone third and short going over the middle where you can put the ball on the outside shoulder if someone's on the you know inside shoulder, and you can make that play even though the window's you know a foot. Like someone that that has that ability to just kind of be thrown open. That they don't have that right now, and I think it's I think it's kind of like urgently needed, and it's kind of overshadowed just because like the the lack of tackles, but it's close to me in my mind like as far as needing that guy because I, I don't see him anywhere on the roster and when you're talking about a need and like Jimmy Graham's kind of popping into your head a little bit like things are bad like if that feels like man too bad he's not on the team so like they definitely need somebody in that that role whether it's a receiver or or you know a tight end that, that can consistently do that. Nick Underhill, New Orleans Up Football is the site. Go sub to him on YouTube. Uh, go go sub to the site if you want to stay up to date with all Lady Saints. Wow, just amazing black and gold takes right there, Jake. I don't think I've ever heard any takes that are better than the two guys that just gave you that take. And you can keep getting them by going ahead and liking, subscribing, ringing the bell to get notifications when we post. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next OTB Saints.